Good morning, or depending on when you're watching this, good afternoon, good evening, or good night. My name's Ross, and I was always told I had a voice for radio, so today I am bringing you a game from the Athena Games City Championships in Norwich in the UK. Now, this is happening in the standard format, so we are going from the X and Y set all the way through till breakthrough. Breakpoint is not legal yet, but you can rest assured that when it is, tournament games on this channel will be very, very quickly coming along. Don't you worry, you're pretty little heads about it. Now, we are in 15 minutes. We are in best of three, and I should say thank you very much to the lovely people at Athena Games in Norwich. Definitely one of my favourite places in the UK to play. So sit back, grab yourself a nice beverage, and enjoy this game from the Norwich City Championships. Best of three, 50 minutes, X and Y to break through. All right, ladies and gentlemen, so this is the fifth, the final round in Swiss at least. We do have hopefully a top eight and a top four game to be bringing you lovely people. On the left, we have got Guy Beaver. He is going to be playing Manectric Bats. And on the right, we have got Tom Goodson. He is going to be playing Lucario Bats. And you'll notice that this is a matchup we saw previously in this um, particular series of videos here. And we discussed it then. So as always, I recommend you go back, watch all the videos from Norwich City so that you can fully engage. What I don't want to do is be repeating stuff for people that have watched other videos. So I will explain the matchup as we go along. But at least to start off with, I'm going to assume that you have some knowledge of the previous game. Now... Guy here has had a very good start. He has got three Zubats on the bench, and he's got a Manectric in the active, which presumably he will be wanting to get out of the active. Um, so he's drawing through an awful lot of cards. He's doing all right. He's getting a level ball, which he went and got a goal bat straight away. Now, he's going to need those bats. Like we saw in the previous game, he can't be trading Manectrix against Lucario's. It's not going to work. What he needs to do is really be bringing up those bats and using those bats to take down the Lucario's. Now, you notice he got a jamming net in his discard. Um, it's a bit of a shame for him that Tom didn't start with an EX. Jamming net is the lesser played Team Flare tool. Which, if you attach it to one of your opponent's Pokemon EXs, it reduces damage done by 20 damage. I.e. Lucario's first attack would do a base of 10. Now, if Tom doesn't draw anything off of this Professor Birch, he's going to shuffle his hand in, flip a coin. If heads he draws 7, tails he draws 4. Oh, and this is not a great time to pull a Tails. You can see there, Guy is getting pretty excited about this. Guy knows he's doing 40 damage with Manectric, which means next turn he needs an Energy or a Muscle Band or a Goal Bat. And we know he's got a Goal Bat in his hand because he searched for it in order to get the win. Uh, and it doesn't look like Tom's got anything. So all Guy needs to do is drop that Goal Bat down. Oh, and there's an energy as well. Just take the win. Don't, don't keep going. That's just mean. Okay. Um, oh, that's four energy out of five prizes at least. Just to be clear, ladies and gentlemen, as I have said on a number of occasions, if you've got a good deck, you should always have six good cards prized. That should always happen. Unless you've got like a one-off tech. So maybe you've got a an enhanced hammer prized against a, a deck that doesn't play special energy. But as a general rule, you should have six good cards prized. Because that's the way it goes. If, you've, if you look at your prize after every game and go, oh, those six were prized, thank goodness. You've probably made a terrible deck. <laughs> to be perfectly honest with you. Just as a side note there. I'm, I'm not, nothing against either player. That's not a judgment on either player. Just something I've been, I've been pointing out recently that I like to point out on occasions. So, Guy's stolen a game here, and this is good for Guy. Now, when you've got Manectric Bats against Lucario Bats, Manectric is at a disadvantage. Manectric is weak to Lucario. Lucario will run through the Manectrics. And yes, the Manectric player can get their Crobats out and start attacking the Lucario with Crobats. But turn three at the absolute earliest, ladies and gentlemen, could that possibly happen? So you're really relying on the Manectric in the early game, and that's going to fall to the Lucario. What you need to do is steal one game and hope you get a draw, or steal a couple games out of three, which is difficult but doable. 
Manectric Bats does not also lose Lucario Bats. Like you say, careful play, Crobat usage, you can win. Especially if you draw better than your opponent. It's just difficult. The fact that Guy has won game one, and in such short time, it means he's not going to win game two. We're not going to see a situation where he sits there and game two doesn't finish. We've got what well, must be a 45 minutes odd for game two. It's going to finish. Here's the key, though. He's got a chance in game three. Worst case scenario, he may well end up with a draw out of this because Tom has now got to win two full games in order to win this match. But also, Guy needs to steal one of two games now. The first game has happened. It's no longer stealing two games out of three. It's now stealing one game out of two. And that is far easier. So we see Tom getting rid of a couple of supporters, a Zerosic and a Lysander with an Ultra Ball. Goes for a Lucario. Interesting he didn't go for a Shaman with that, which makes me think maybe he doesn't play Shaman. Maybe he plays one and it's prized. He doesn't have much in his hand there. Um, although, you know, you see the full art supporters, so you would presume that he at least has access to Shaman. Because most people, you know, they get the full art supporters as a luxury when they've got the cards that they'd like. So, uh, so we've got an Ultra Ball and a Level Ball being played in one go um, for a Zubat and a Shaman. It is interesting that Guy chose not to put the Flash Energy on Manectric and to discard it instead. Now, now, we could have got rid of the Trainer's Mail, for instance, which is... You know, trainers may all look at the top four cards, grab something. You could get something really good. You could get nothing. See, that's not a great trainers mail at this stage of the game. Oh, and he's actually chosen to get nothing. So there, he's thrown away a flash energy. What he could have done was attached it or saved it. And then gone ahead and, you know, just gotten rid of the trainers mail with the ultra ball. As he draws shame in uh, for five cards here. And the reason you would do that, quite simply is because you then aren't weak to Lucario. Let's say next turn, Tom goes goal bat, free retreat into Lucario, smash. Lucario's first attack does 30, add a strong energy, 50, add a muscle band, 70, add a fighting stadium, 90, and that, ladies and gentlemen, is a one-hit KO, which doesn't happen if you've got a flash energy attached. Now, don't get me wrong, that doesn't mean that, got, that Tom couldn't get a one-hit KO, but it would mean that Tom would need to get an enhanced hammer in order to do so. Now, even though in a fair fight, Guy is at a disadvantage in this game, at least in, in both games so far, Guy's deck is running better. And in the Pokemon trading card game, ladies and gentlemen, running better is absolutely huge. If you're in a situation where you can draw better than your opponent, even in an unfavorable matchup, you can very often lead yourself off to a win. So, you know, we've already seen Guy... I, I said steal game one. I mean, he, he won game one fair and square, we should add. But you saw in game one, he got all those Zubats down. Oh, that muscle band's big, because now he's doing 40 damage, double to 80 with uh, weakness, which will KO the Zubat, rather than 20, doubled with weakness to 40, which won't get the KO on the Zubat. Uh, now, he's gone for that goal bat again. I'm not usually a fan of doing this, to be honest. You can play the level ball next turn. Maybe you want another Zubat next turn, or... You know, who knows? I mean, let's say for argument's sake now that Tom KOs a Zubat. It does get the KO. Let's say for argument's sake here that Tom kills a Zubat. Well, now you've got one Zubat on the field and two goal bats in hand. Rather than one Zubat on the field, a, crow a goal bat in hand, and a level ball that you can use to search for another one. Oh, and he's got it. He can go for a muscle band here, and he has got the KO on the Manectric. I presume he's going to go for the muscle band, because that will get the KO here. And that's big, ladies and gentlemen. Plus, not only does it get him two prizes, but it gets him two... Why is he going for a level ball? Corinna lets you go for a Pokemon and an item. Not I'm assuming he plays muscle band. Um... It lets you go for a Pokemon and an item, and remember, tools are item tools, so they count as items. So he could have gone for a muscle band there and guaranteed the KO. Maybe he's got one in hand? 
but he gets a Lucario, he goes for the Ultra Ball, and he gets a Zubat from it. Guy must, I mean, Guy must have been worried he was going for a, um, for a muscle band there. That is a huge break for Guy, because now Guy can put a second energy on the Manectric, and he can go for it. By the way, had Tom gotten that muscle band, then that would have meant that uh, Guy's decision to discard rather than attach to flash energy would have cost him two prizes because we saw that Tom did not have the enhanced hammer but it's a moot point not only that but that Manectric has 30 HP remaining now which means a goal back cannot get the KO now just just to be clear in the previous turn I wasn't saying that Tom would gonna try and KO a Zubat of course he was going to go after the Manectric. What I was saying, though, is a prudent player doesn't play the level ball in that situation because you can play the level ball next turn. The goal bat will still be in your deck. By not playing the level ball, you're open, you open yourself up to particular plays. Plus, you know, maybe next turn you end up with one card... You know, you, you need one more card for an Ultra Ball, or, you know, it, you're usually better off getting rid of a Level Ball than you are a Goal Bat, because the Goal Bat you're going to want to use later. So we see a Lysander there, we get, see a KO on the Zubat, and 20 more damage on the Lucario. Now, good news, Tom's... Okay, now I see what he's doing. He did attach a set. Now, he had the KO with the first attack doing 30. He chose to add a second energy and do the second attack for 60, which was overkill. But, crucially, it allowed him to draw until he had six cards in his hand. And as we've seen, Tom is not drawing very well in these games. He needs something. Now, we're going to see 40 damage from the Manectric here. That's not going to be enough. But do we have some bats? Now... We're going to see him put up to 150. If there's a Crobat there, he gets the KO. And I was going to say, that's the better play here. He gets the Head Ringer onto the benched Lucario, which means Tom is going to have to attach a muscle, an energy this turn and next turn just to get an attack going with that Lucario. Now, it doesn't really matter if Guy has got the Crobat this turn. These Lucario Bats decks don't tend to play many AZ. I mean, sometimes they do to reuse the Bats, but they often, and even if they do, they like to be playing one of them. If Tom were to play an AZ, he would have to discard both of the energy on the Lucario in order to play it, and then he doesn't get an attack this turn. So the Lucario sitting there with 20 HP remaining, 30 HP remaining, I should say. He's on 150, he's got 180, which means as long as Tom can get, and you see he's got a VS Seeker, so we can play something like a Sycamore next turn. As long as he gets a Crobat next turn, he's going to be just fine and dandy. Now, here's an interesting play, Baby Landorus. I say Baby Landorus. It's a common slang term for a non-EX Landorus. And Baby Landorus does 20 damage and allows you to discard a basic fighting from your discard pile to one of your benched Pokemon. And, of course, you then use Muscle Band and uh, Fighting Stadium to increase the damage that you're doing. It's not going to get the KO, but it's going to help. Oh, oh, now there's an interesting play. VS Seeker falls a Rosic to get rid of the Head Ringer on his own Lucario. Does he have a better supporter in his hat in his discard? I can't remember if he's played a Sycamore this turn, this game or not. Um, but now he gets to take a couple of prizes. Because, of course, he KOs the Manectric using the Lucario. So we see him picking... Oh, now that's a nice play. Picks up the Lucario... Oh, sorry, picks up the Crobat using an AZ. Then reuses, because then he's got the Crobat in his hand that he can put down. So that's a nice little play there. And he gets to take two prizes. Now, honestly here, I'd expect him to start uh, just skill diving the bench Lucario. Landorus does a base 20 damage 
Fighting Stadium doesn't add damage because it only adds damage to an EX and Crobat isn't an EX. So you're doing base zero damage because of the resistance of Crobat. So you can sit there and start poking at the bench Lucario and then use that VS Seeker later on to pull up the Lucario and do the final 100 damage. To put it another way, skill dive this turn for 30, skill dive next turn for 30, and then the turn after, you can go ahead and Lysander it up and skill dive the active Lucario as it would then be for 100. Um, unfortunately, next turn he'll be 10 short. He can drop a goal bat to do 20 damage, and we know he's got the goal bat in hand because he used an AZ. Um, but it's not, unfortunately, going to get the KO. Ooh! Oh, that's a shame. If that was a strong energy of a muscle band, he'd get the KO. As it is, he's doing 80 damage. It's not quite enough. Now, here, we're, you know, Guy's just going to be able to attach an energy and retreat the Shaman. And he's going to be 10 damage short at the moment. So I, I wouldn't Lysander this turn if I were him. Now... To be clear, it's not going to make a huge difference because I don't think he's going to be able to play another switch to get the Lucario out of the active. But the point is, he's not getting the KO here. Now, I mean, it, it doesn't really matter if I'm honest. I'm being incredibly picky in this game. Guy, if you're watching, I'm sorry, sir. Because don't forget, even if Guy does, uh, Tom does get a switch and put the Lucario to the bench, Guy can just skill dive to get the KO. But I'm a fan of using the Lysander to get the KO. I think it's a more prudent play in most situations. But let's not forget, ladies and gentlemen, next turn, Guy can either skill dive the Lucario or um, draw into a Crobat and just use the ability to KO it or use an AZ to pick up the active Crobat and use that Crobat to evolve the benched Golbat and use that 30 damage from the ability to KO the Lucario. Because when you evolve Crobat, you get to use the ability to do 30 damage. Either way, ladies and gentlemen, I think it's fair to say Guy is winning this game. Now, there was a chance for a win. Any energy and a Lysander, or a switch and a Lysander, or a floatstone and a Lysander, i.e. if he could get an energy on the Lucario, or... He could get the whole Lucha into the active and hit a Lysander. He kills the Shaman and takes the final prizes off the game. That has not happened. He needs a Lysander to win this game. It is not going to happen. Um, Guy is going to win the game because he's going to be able to skill dive next turn at the least. The game is over. Now, I should say at this stage, thank you to uh, Guy and um, Tom for being on the stream. And thank you to all the lovely people at Athena Games in Norwich in the UK. As I've said on previous videos, not only did they allow me to record, but they set up in a separate room, gave us a table judge, and even turned the camera on and off in each round. Wonderful, wonderful people. Cannot recommend that place highly enough. Make sure, of course, that you comment on this video if you've got anything to say. Make sure you like the video. And, of course, make sure you subscribe to my channel. One of the problems, and that was just my ending bit so we can end nice and quickly in a minute. One of the problems in this game is Tom hasn't got the Zubats out. Had Tom had a Crobat, as, excuse me, had Tom had a Golbat on the bench this turn, he could drop a Crobat and win. Because he'd be able to KO the Shaman. But he didn't. And I don't, and, and again, I've, I've talked about this on my re most recent podcast, week 181. You've got the KO, take the KO. You're not playing the clock to try and get a draw because you need to play the clock. You have two prizes remaining. You are about to do 100 damage to an active Pokemon that has 30 HP remaining. You've got the win, sir. Take the win. Now, to be fair, they could be really good friends, so it really doesn't matter. But, you know, just pointing it out there. Right, I hope I didn't sound too mean on that last bit. You know the deal, ladies and gentlemen. Like, comment, and subscribe. Thank you, James. Thank you, uh, sorry. Thank you, Tom. Thank you, Guy. Thank you to the wonderful people at Athena Games. 
It was a pleasure to be there. I'll be back for regional shortly. You, ladies and gentlemen, you look after yourselves till next we meet. I'll be back with another video in a couple days' time. Look after yourselves until then. Thank you very much for watching. My name's Ross, and you've been watching PTCG Radio.